Hello and welcome to Rotoballer Starts and Sits. I'm Matt Donnelly, and it's getting to that point of the season that if you have a healthy wide receiver on your bench, then you have a player to put in your flex position here in week number three. As we head into this week, fantasy managers, they are scrambling to fill the voids left behind by A.J. Brown and his hamstring injury, Cooper Cup and that ankle, Justin Jefferson in that quad, Amonra St. Brown and his leg injury, not to mention Debo Samuel, who now has a calf strain to go along with everything else that we've been talking about. This past week has been one of carnage amongst the wide receiver position. Now, did I forget to mention we've already lost Puka Nakua and Marquise Hollywood Brown for extended periods? Luckily for you, if you're looking for someone to fill that void, to fill that hole that's left in your lineup, you've come to the right place as we start our week three starts and sits at the wide receiver position. First wide receiver that we're going to talk about is... Rashid Shaheed, yes, I had the need for speed when it comes to the New Orleans Saints wide receiver. After hauling in three of his five targets for 73 yards and a touchdown back in the Saints season opener, Shaheed, he did it again against the Dallas Cowboys, hauling in all four of his targets for 96 yards and yes, another score. I think it's about time that we put some respect on this New Orleans Saints offense there. And Derek Carr's name to boot. With Carr under center of the season, the Saints have scored on each of their 15 drives so far. No other quarterback can make a claim to that kind of success so far. The Saints offense, it is one of the most explosive units in the league so far this season, and Shahid's explosive playmaking ability is one of the reasons for that newfound success. As Dwayne McFarlane of Fantasy Life pointed out, Shahid, after two contests, has averaged 18.6 fantasy points per game thanks in part to an 81% route participation rate while accounting for 46% of the Saints air yard share and a 23% target share. Say what you will, Shahid looks like he's going to be the perfect complement for Clint Kubiak and this offensive scheme down in the bayou there and he's going to be a receiver that's going to be a top 24 option from this point on. This week, Shahid and the Saints take on an Eagles defense that has been very generous over the past couple seasons when it comes to fantasy production and the wide receiver position. With the Eagles' struggles in their secondary and this newfound success in the Saints' passing game, this should be one of those games where Shahid happens to be a wide receiver too with some serious upside. Another wide receiver I want to talk about is Marvin Harrison Jr. of the Arizona Cardinals as they take on the Detroit Lions this week. After a dismal performance back in week number one, Cardinals rookie must have been doing a little bit of scoreboard watching there, seeing Malik Neighbors, more on him in a second, putting up some serious numbers and say, hey, you know what? Hold my beer. I can do this too. And he hauled in a couple touchdown passes and 130 yards in the first eight minutes of that game last week in that Arizona Cardinals and that Los Angeles Rams NFC West showdown. Some may point out that he's caught all of his passes so far this season in two of eight quarters. Meanwhile, others will see that the Buckeye is a top 15 fantasy option heading into Monday Night Football's contest. Looking ahead to week number three, Harrison Jr. and the Cardinals, they are taking on the Detroit Lions team. The Detroit Lions, who have been allowing 48.15 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers through the first two weeks of the season, and they have surrendered over 450 yards to date. Harrison Jr., he may not have another 29-point fantasy performance like he had against the Rams, but I wouldn't bet against another top 12 fantasy finish for the rookie this week. And finally, the third wide receiver that I'm starting this week is Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Now, hey, when you're listening to this right now, I'm fully out there telling you right now that Brandon Ayuk needs to be wrapped in bubble wrap. Cooper Cup gone. Puka Nakua gone. Debo Samuel gone. Christian McCaffrey gone. You see where I'm going with this? We need to protect Brandon Ayuk at all costs right now. It has been a couple rough weeks for Ayuk, who has, guess what, had a slow start after missing training camp. Funny how that works. Who would have known, right? Now, after seven months of not playing football, he's now got two weeks under his belt. Two weeks, what you call that his training camp, if you will. The worst part is, even in that whole missing some time there, he's still fourth in receiving yards with 71, trailing Debo Samuel Sr.'s 164, George Kittle and Jawan Jennings. He also ranks fourth behind the aforementioned names we are talking about receptions. He has just six so far in those first two contests. Last year, Ayuk became just one of seven receivers since 2010 to average more than 3.0 yards per route run. He also had a 61.5% contested catch rate and has been among the best when it comes to successes versus different types of coverages, according to Reception Perception. Now, don't call it a comeback, but Brennan Ayuk, he's looking to have a bit of a redemption story this week against the Rams, a team that has allowed a pair of touchdowns and 130 yards to Marvin Harrison Jr. there in that first quarter last week, not to mention 121 yards and a touchdown to Jameson Williams back in week number one. 
As for wide receivers that you're sitting, this one hurts me just a little more than anyone else here because I have been peacocking Malik Neighbors' name here for the last two weeks, and now he is on my sit list there. That's right. Malik Neighbors, he's taken on the Cleveland Browns, and this has nothing to do with Malik Neighbors as a player. This has everything to do with the Cleveland Browns' defense. In week number one, they held Dak Prescott to just 179 passing yards and CeeDee Lamb to just five receptions for 61 yards. Then in week two, they held Gabriel Davis to just 43 yards on three receptions and Christian Kirk to one catch and negative one yards. This all adds up to, hey, we need to fade the wide receiver position when we're talking about the New York Giants. In fact, you have to fade just about every wide receiver when they take on the Cleveland Browns. Further to all that, guess what? Trevor Lawrence... He was limited to just 14 of 30 passing for 220 yards. So we got 220 yards kind of at that high point here when we're talking about passing against this Cleveland Browns team. That is not enough yards to go around for the New York Giants. Now, I'm not sure if Jacksonville has a better offense than, say, the New York Giants, but they certainly have better pieces in place to perform better, but I just don't see that happening this week, especially when we talk about this Browns defense. Neighbors, he proved that he is a talented pass catcher, projected to be one of the elites for years to come. However, this week, it ain't it. It, it isn't. This is one of those games where the rookie is going to have to learn rookie mistakes and how to play in this game. Now, another wide receiver that probably should Oh, go back to school here a little bit. It's Michael Pittman Jr. of the Indianapolis Colts as they take on the Chicago Bears. With just seven receptions for 52 yards, Michael Pittman Jr. sits second on the Colts in receptions and third in receiving yards despite his 15 targets leading the team. In fact, those 15 targets are five more than the next closest wide receiver who happens to be Alec Pierce. Maybe this is more about Pierce being good than maybe Pittman being bad, but if we keep following these numbers, these are not what people envisioned out of a second round draft pick in Michael Pittman. Compacting issues and having fantasy managers reaching for that panic button is the fact that we haven't even seen Josh Downs being incorporated into this offense. And I have a hard time believing that it's going to come at Alec Pierce's expense. If anyone's going to lose some opportunities, it's probably going to be Michael Pittman once Josh Downs is ready to play. Now, at the beginning of the season, I talked about the Anthony Richardson project here as it pertains to fantasy sports. With Gardner Minshew, Pittman was basically the only target. He was the apple of the eye, so to speak. However, with Richardson, Pittman has had a much smaller target share. And he's also seen his catch rate go from 69.9% there to 46.7% with Anthony Richardson this season. With Richardson's scrambling ability and his ability to make those off-schedule throws, this affects Pittman's ceiling there, as shown by his 7.4 yards per reception this season. And he's been outproduced by guys like Alec Pierce, Adonai Mitchell, Ashton Doolin, and Jonathan Taylor, who have all had over 16 yards per reception so far this season. And finally, the last sit of the week is Terry McLaren of the Washington Commanders taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Speaking of disappointing performances, McLaren has to be the poster child so far this season as he's got just 39 receiving yards in two contests. Those 39 yards, that sits fifth on the Commanders behind Austin Eckler, Zach Ertz, Noah Brown, and Brian Robinson Jr. I don't know if what is more of a red flag, the fact that he's only got 39 yards, or the leading wide receiver on this Commanders team is Austin Eckler with just 99 yards. If you expect things to change this week or improve, Guess what? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not going to happen. The Bengals, they held Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to just 151 yards passing after holding the Patriots to 121 yards passing the week previous. In other words, the yardage is going to be hard to come by again this week. Now, the good news is better days, they are coming. In week number four, the Commanders, they take on the Carolina Panthers. Each week, Jaden Daniels, he's going to get better. He's going to get more and more comfortable in this system and gain more trust in his abilities as a passer. And once that happens, McLaren is going to begin his fantasy ascension but until then you have to sit him so with that all being said you're not going to just sit there on your computer this week not knowing what's going to happen make sure to head over to rotoballer.com and check out the discord channel there provided by the rotoballer as the experts are in there to help you with all your fantasy football starts and sits questions 24 7 see you next time